welcome to another video by Chow Projects. It's been two years and two new regions since my last top 10 ranking video. And with the arrival of new characters as well as a burgeoning variety of Dendro teams, there's been a huge shakeup in these rankings. The ranking in this tier list is based on my experience playing these characters, watching other people's guides or performing damage calculations, and is thus bound to reflect my personal opinion. It's perfectly reasonable if some of you disagree with the rankings I gave, so feel free to discuss your views respectfully in the comments section. Since the difficulty of Genshin Impact's main storyline is low, any low investment free to play character can clear most of the game quite smoothly. There are lots more characters that are wonderfully fun to play yet reasonably strong but regrettably won't make it into this list. We will be limited to discussing the most broken characters for the current 4.3 endgame content such as the Spiral Abyss. Without further ado, let's hop into my personal ranking of the top 10 characters in Genshin Impact. Flying in with a wings of thunder, Fischl, the princessin, the Vera Taelong makes it into 10th place. More accurately, it will be her night raven familiar, Osvaldo Ravnavins, representing this position. Oz is the best accessible source of off view electro application and electro energy generation. Between her elemental skill and burst, Fischl can achieve nearly full uptime on Oz while spending little time on field herself, enabling a variety of electro reactions such as superconduct, electro charged, and most notably dendro reactions such as quicken and hyperbloom. These dendro reactions are ridiculously strong even in low investment teams and enable Fischl to viably run elemental mastery builds if obtaining a good crit ratio is challenging. Moreover, the introduction of the Golden Troop Artifact set has elevated her viability in Fontaine even further by providing an unconditional 70% boost to Oz's already decent damage. Teams such as Elhatham Quicken and Nahida Hyperbloom simply cannot go without Fischl, which serves as the game's most efficient off-field electro applier. Eternally sitting at 9th place is the Electro Archon's puppet, Raiden Shogun. The Shogun is also a competent source of off-field electro application, but she can disrupt some team's rotations due to the extra field time her burst takes up. This is usually worth it though, as her burst has always dealt a tremendous amount of damage, which is now further bolstered by Dendro reactions. Her true niche lies in being the best elemental burst support in the game. Not only is she a universal battery for all team members, she also directly buffs the damage of their elemental bursts by an amount proportional to their energy cost. This makes Raiden's national team one of the most powerful in the game, as she entirely mitigates the energy regeneration issues that often plague burst rotation teams. Her ability to reduce the entire team's energy recharge needs while rapidly dispatching any enemies with her raw damage prowess earns her a well-deserved right place. Securing a solid 8th place spot is the Geo Archon Zhongli. While the arrival of Dendro has eroded his original top 3 placement, Zhongli still remains an admirable shielder who provides cozy longevity and interruption resistance to any team. He forms the bedrock of high-risk high-reward teams such as those with Xiao, Wu Tao, and Melt Ganyu by providing impressive resilience to damage alongside a universal 20% decrease in enemy resistance. His 100% uptime shield offers unique, unparalleled comfort to any team composition by protecting them from aggressive enemies such as Consecrated Beasts, Abyss Heralds, and Buses. While he has been let down by a scarcity of viable Geo damage dealers and the underwhelming performance of the Geo element as a whole, his solid synergy with new characters such as Navia has crystallized his current viability. Yelan's swift arrival in the 7th place is anything but an enigma. As one of the first few purely HP scaling characters to be released, we finally have a use for those mountains of once useless HP artifacts. Yelan's free to play weapon options are diverse, as her lack of dependence on the attack main stat opens up numerous options such as the Favonius Bow and even 3 stars like Slingshot. Hydro is quite unquestionably the best element in the game right now as it forms the cornerstone of extremely potent elemental reactions. If you're looking for damage, Hydro can vaporize for a 2x bonus and enable reverse fate 
by several on-field pyro DPS characters like Hu Tao and Xiang Ling. If hoping to enable Blizzard Straya builds such as on Ayaka, Gan Yu, or Rizli, you also need Hydro to freeze enemies in place. If running a Bloom, Hyper Bloom, or Virgin team, Hydro is also necessary to generate Dendro Quarks. Hydro's irreplaceability in the current meta has skyrocketed the viability of the game's off-field Hydro applies. Among the three of them, Yelan's niche is dealing a tremendous amount of single-target damage. Her death clarion dice clarifies the death of automatons, mechas, fatui, and even annoying flying bosses such as the Weenut and Rune Serpent. As if that's not enough, her elemental burst provides a progressively increasing damage buff to the active character, up to a 50% bonus which is massive for on few vaporized DPS like Wu Tao. Justifying his way into the 6th place, we have the fully-fledged Hydro Dragon, Nouvellet. If knowledge is power, Nouvellet is truly a paragon of power, as the strongest on few DPS in the game. Nouvellet's kit is rather straightforward and functions just fine without any elemental reactions. His raw HP scaling is so high that he can easily Hydro Pump any non-immune enemies into oblivion. The raging torrents of his charged attack are further amplified by the excellent Hunter Artifact set, increasing his crit rate by 36% almost instantly, which is more than what a fully maxed crit circlet can provide. While his interruption resistance needs a shielder or his first constellation to be mitigated, Nuvelet can also hover around rapidly during his charge attack for excellent mobility, unlike his imposter Hydro Traveler who is stuck static on the ground. His no frills damage and on few hydro application is currently uncontested and lets him obliterate previously annoying enemies such as Pyro Abyss Lectors with ease. Calmly riding the winds into the fifth place is Kazuha. Kazuha has established an unshakable niche as the best Nemo support in the entire game, and by equipping the Viridescent Venera artifact set, he can skyrocket the damage of any Pyro, Hydro, Electro, or Cryo team. Kazuha also further boosts the elemental damage bonus of all matching characters based on his elemental mastery. His E skill provides decent suction while dealing massive AoE damage on the punch, to the extent it's often joked how Kazuha kills the overworld enemies even before the main DPS makes it onto the field. Overall, Kazuha is a very solid damage dealer that also profoundly enhances the damage of all characters on your team. However, the arrival of Dendro teams such as El Haytham teams, who cannot be boosted by Kazuha, as well as Animo and Geo DPS such as Wanderer and Navia respectively, have proven that Kazuha's boosting powers is not omnipotent. Nonetheless, his role compression and comfort of play earns him a nearly irreplaceable spot in most traditional elemental teams. Slicing his way into the 4th place spot is the gallant swordmaster, author, and businessman Xing Chiu. His lore-wise status as a polymath is reflected in his versatility as a hydro support. What he offers that Yelan does not is a great deal of damage reduction, over 40% at maximum talent levels, which nearly halves the damage of all attacks from enemies. His burst acts as a pseudo shield that basically doubles the durability of all your characters, while providing the interruption resistance of a real shield that protects them from being staggered by bloodthirsty enemies. His main niche among the three Hydro sub-DPS in this tier list is his tremendous off-field Hydro application, making him the best option for reaction-based teams like the National Team, Utah Vape, and the Hyper Hyperbloom that are hungry for lots of Hydro. For an AT energy burst support, Xing Xiu's self-sufficiency in energy generation is convenient, as his best in slot sacrificial sword is a 4 star weapon that allows him to regenerate at least 3 quarters of his burst with 2 consecutive elemental skills. On this note, his elemental skill is a 2 hit combo with a surprisingly high total multiplier rivaling Chao's ranged stance burst, so the Gu Hua Geek's direct damage output is also not to be trifled with. While his damage is initially quite a bit lower than the Lance, all of his constellations provide consistent increments to his damage and utility, closing the gap and making him an increasingly viable asset the longer you spend on the game. At this point, 
I think most people can already guess who the top three characters are going to be. In terms of power and utility, the big three are nearly neck and neck, and I thus had quite a hard time ordering them. All three of them not only provide damage, but also play unrivaled, distinctive supporting roles in any team. Thus, bear in mind that their rankings are close to interchangeable, and they're all cream of the crop characters who can find a place in almost any team. Before I review their identities, here are some honourable mentions. For on few DPS, we have Al Haytham, Linny, Hu Tao, and Rizli. For sub DPS, we have Xiangling, Nilu, and Venti. For supports, we have Kokomi and Taiju. Now moving on to the anticipated top three. Sprouting right into the third place is none other than the wise Dendro Archon Nahida. Despite her young appearance, she sits at the pinnacle of the Dendro element and is unequivocally the best of few Dendro support and DPS. She exemplifies the reaction-centric combat style of Dendro through a streamlined, synergistic kit that scales off elemental mastery. Nahida's elemental skill can swiftly mark all enemies and dish out pulsing waves of damage every time a Dendro reaction bursts forth. These attacks also apply a substantial source of Dendro for Hyper Bloom and Quicken teams, giving a second wind to traditional DPS characters such as Ke Qing, while underpinning the viability of Sino, El Haytham, Nailu, and numerous other Electro, Dendro, and Hydro DPS characters. Moreover, her elemental burst has the largest AoE in the game, bolstering her triconic purification attacks, while also skyrocketing the elemental mastery of the active character. Her excellent niche is virtually uncontested, with the only flaccid competition coming from Dendro Traveler, Kolai, and possibly Yao Yao. Once the most broken Dabokin character of the game, Bennett now sits in second place. Bennett provides similar if not greater versatility than Kazuha as an amplifying damage dealer. He can act as a main damage dealer with his spammable elemental skill and high multiplier elemental burst, but in most teams, Bennett functions as a damage augmenting burst support. Bennett's elemental burst buff of 600 to 1000 flat attack translates to an overall damage buff of between 40 to 80%. Pretty much every single character in the game is relying on him to draw out the maximum damage dealing potential, with some rare exceptions being Yelan, Kokomi, Albedo, and Nuvelet. How is this different from Kazuha's nearly universal elemental damage buff? For starters, Bennett's buff can snapshot, meaning for off-field DPS like Xiangling and Beido, the buff lasts as long as the duration of the DPS's elemental burst, even if Bennett's buff has expired. This theoretically permits a permanent buff of Xiangling's and Beidou's damage. Bennett's buff also applies to physical and geo damage dealers as long as he is in C6. Bennett also provides extremely rapid healing to the active character, achieving a sufficient defensive counterplay against those aggressive abyss monsters. Compared to Kazuha, Bennett's drawbacks lie in the limited radius of his Q and the application of Pyro, which makes your character vulnerable to elemental reactions such as Vaporize and Overload, which are often exploited by foes of the abyss. Now, dancing her way into the deserved number one spot is our beloved Hydro Archon, Furina Deconte. As the current best Hydro support in the game, Furina provides all there is to be loved about the element its raw damage, its enabling of other reactions, its healing, and its universal damage buff. For starters, her Oja form consists of three Hydro Saloon members that deal superb damage to adversaries, but have lackluster Hydro application compared to Xingqiu and Yelan. So what is her niche in this aspect? Actually, there are three. Firstly, her off-field Hydro damage has 100% uptime and is an elemental skill, like Xingqiu and Yelan, which are gated by elemental bursts and require good energy management to maintain close to full uptime in certain teams. Secondly, Purina's Loon members automatically guide towards and attack levitating foes such as the Winup and Rune Serpent, which Xingqiu's Rain Swords may have trouble aiming at and hitting. Thirdly and finally, the saloon members are autonomous attackers, unlike Xingqiu and Yelan, which need normal attacks to be triggered. This makes Furina compatible with characters that don't rely on normal attacks, like Nuvelet, Lenny, and Kanyu. While Furina's Numa form is less often used in single player, Furina is also an excellent healer in co-op mode with a singer of many waters, which is similar to Bennett's buff in potency but with full uptime and without the vulnerability of self-elemental application, letting her serve as a fairly reliable healer. 
She is also enabled by the Golden Truth Artifact set, which boosts her already tremendous elemental skill damage by a further 70%, letting Furina decimate any enemy that isn't outright immune to Hydra. But the best aspect of Furina's kit is her burst, which provides a universal damage buff to all characters. While the buff strength is held back by its reliance on HP changes, this synergizes well with the HP drain of Furina's elemental skill and offers unparalleled versatility compared to other buffing supports. Kazuha cannot buff Geo, Benjo, and Animo because those elements can't be small, but Furina can. Yelan and Bennett can only buff the on field character the skills that aren't snapshotable, such as Xingxiu's Rain Swords. But Furina buffs everyone, on few or off few, basically multiplying your entire team's damage by that amount. For a gifted actor, Furina really offers the best role compression in the entire game while being of the best element, which is what makes her the top character as of version 4.3. That's all for today, and thanks for watching!